power. Our LSU. Boom! All night long. Yes. Yeah. Let's freaking go. It's March Madness. I'm so excited to see Kim Moki make her run back to the championship this year. I was very lucky to go to the Final Four last year and got a big game coming up to kick things off. Of course, the second postseason college basketball game being played in the Maravich Assembly Center this week. So we'll talk about that coming up. But I want to start with Brian Kelly. Is 2024, year three has always been a big year for him in his career. Is this the year to make the run to the college football playoff and actually win the national championship? I understand defensively a lot of us have our qualms, but if you miss this yesterday, this right here, if you're listening via audio, I'm going to sample and slim and simplify this all the way down to the studs. This is the 2025 conference schedule. It is the flipped version of the 2024 conference schedule. So all the teams that LSU plays at home, they will play on the road in 2025 and vice versa. Versa, which I think is a sham, but I'll save my thoughts for that at a later date. The bottom line is this, y'all. This schedule is brutal, and what you don't see is an opening season true road game at Clemson. That is not on the schedule right here. So this isn't an insurmountable schedule, but two things really stand out to me. The first is this home slate of games is not as good as a normal, regular LSU season's home slate of games. The second thing is this road slate of games is unfreaking believably tough at Alabama, at Ole Miss, which won't be as good as they are this year, at Oklahoma, at Vanderbilt and at Clemson. So the bottom line, if you're looking at this from just a macro point of view, 2024 might be your year where you do have two offensive tackles returning, four of your five starting offensive linemen returning. I really do believe that this 2025 slate is is tough. I, I really, really, really do think so. And it's going to be interesting to see if there's any changes uh, from then until now. It was just kind of thrown out there this week. So for me, if you're Brian Kelly, you might have to push your chips in this year. And I understand we have a really good 2025 class coming in. The 2026 class is also very fruitful in uh, the state of Louisiana. I saw that they did just offer the number one player in the class of 2026 at the wide receiver position, Chris Henry Jr. I believe he's actually the son of former NFL wide receiver Chris Henry, who I enjoyed watching. I believe he played for the Bengals. Um, I I vaguely remember it when I was uh, smaller. But, man... 2025, 2026 recruiting classes are going to be good, but the bottom line is next year is a really golden opportunity because I keep going back to this. The 2024 schedule sets up really nicely for LSU. I understand Ole Miss is going to be tough, but we'll be coming off a bye week to play Ole Miss, and they won't have their first bye by the season when we play them. So that will be their fifth game in a row, and we'll be coming off a bye week. Of course, we've got back-to-back road games. Of course, Alabama is going to be good with all their transfers starting to trickle back. So I, I, I truly do think 2024 is going to be a, a very interesting year, even though defensively we still have a lot of holes. We also don't know how the actual portal cycle uh, is going to work out in the spring. 
maybe LSU's got a trick up their sleeve and bringing in some really talented defensive players that can help the team out right away. So I am really excited about that. We also say hi on a glorious Thursday evening to pick six. Cole Blanche Mick is in the building. Good to see each and every one of you. I know a lot of you are about to have your brackets busted as Kentucky struggles with Oakland. Are you kidding me? Oakland? Is Cal about to lose another NCAA tournament first round in the upset? Are you kidding me? So SEC had a tough day in college troops. I know a lot of you care about your March uh, about March Madness, I do as well. Not as much as I used to, maybe just because LSU is not in it, and maybe the SEC is just sucking, and they are sucking right now. There's no conference that has sucked worse today than the Southeastern Conference, especially if Kentucky flubs this. Now, I want to talk about the women's team. It's going to be very hard for them to repeat. Very, very, very hard. We did get confirmation that POA should be able to play. I did hear Haley Van List say, though, if POA can't go, she is willing to play that pivotal point guard role from start to finish. And, you know, I I, I truly do mean this. One of the more important players in LSU postseason history in any sport who will not get the recognition that she probably deserves is Alexis Morris. Now, uh, of course, Angel Reese is always going to be the star. Um, you know, Flaugge is always going to be a star uh, and a very memorable player from that team. But we do not win that NCAA tournament if we do not have Alexis Morris playing the way that she played last year, uh, especially when we needed it the most. Okay, so the bottom line is for us to win it all. And in any March Madness scenario, when you go through a tournament, right, you look at all the best teams. There has never really been a March Madness team that didn't have steady point guard play win it all. Okay, look at those great South Carolina teams. Yes, they had Aaliyah Boston, but it was uh, Zia Cook. Uh, You look back, North Carolina. One of the best college basketball teams of all time. They beat everybody by double digits. They also beat us on that tournament run. They had Tyler Hansborough. Tyler Hansborough was the best player. Ty Lawson was also there. So we have Angel Reese. We have Anissa Morrow. We have Flaugé. All three of them are playing really well. But for us to win it all, we're going to need Poho or Haley Van Litt to step up and play that point guard role and lead us into the promised land. And obviously, this is going to be a very uh, motivated Haley Van Lith because Louisville could very well be the next round matchup. And that obviously is her former team who she left to go play with LSU. Okay. So here we go. We say hi to Lance. What's up, man? Good to see you. Uh, Cole. Yeah, um, Cole, feel free to send me all of it. Shoot me a message. Yeah, you have my email, powerlsu at gmail.com. Uh, Let's go to Christian Burris. He wants to talk Michaela Williams. I read a few things today that she was lighting it up in practice. Interesting. Michaela Williams. Let's do it. Let's go. Huh? 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 Michaela Williams, of course, former PHO guest. Um, I, I, I should text her father. Her, her, her father's an awesome guy. Um, and, uh, and I, I, I think Michaela could have a big NCAA tournament. You know, she really struggled when we played better opposition or when we played on the road. This will be a first game against not so great opposition in rice and we'll be at home. So we should be in good shape. All right. Now it does look like Kentucky choked this thing and they are about to lose to Oakland. Um, I, I had it playing in the background. Obviously Will Wade is getting, Absolutely massacred right now. Uh, McNeese is losing by 33. And um, 
Of course, I took McNeese plus seven. Huh? 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 Uh, that's actually the only bet I placed all day. I wasn't even placing any bets. I, I said, I'm going to fill out a few brackets, one for the PHL patrons. And I was like, I'm going to place one bet. I'm going to place it for my old basketball coach, Will Wade. And Will, look what you did. Look what you did to me. Look at what you did. Anyway, these have been very hot items. We'll give out my, I think this is my final Xavier Atkins autograph poster. First $20 super chat for the true freshman linebacker. We'll get this uh, right here. Uh, if you don't want that, I'll send you an autograph card. There you go. I got Charles Scott over here. I think I got another Jacob Hester over here. Just let me know, and I'll happily send you that card. Um, I'll say this. As an LSU football fan, I know a lot of you have lost sleep at night knowing that we didn't get to the playoff with one of the best quarterback seasons ever. But you could be Kentucky right now. You, you could be Kentucky where you have a Hall of Fame coach who has been a perennial choker. He has not won more than one game in an NCAA tournament since he won the national championship with Anthony Davis. And Anthony Davis is an old man. Anthony Davis can file for ARP. He's been in the NBA so long. So we still got it pretty good. <laughs> I, I love it. I really, really, really do. Jordan, what's good? New Mexico is going to make a run. I feel it. I feel it. So Kentucky is cooked. And I know. I just know. I got to party it up. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Anytime I see Kentucky go down, the strokes go up. It is a rave in here. Anytime I see Coach Cal take an L, it is a celebration for everybody. Oakland. They lost to Oakland. The kid that was lighting them up for three will be an orthodontist in 10 years. Are you kidding me? Oakland. Huh? Huh? Uh. Oh, man, that's funny. That is so funny. That's... I don't want that. Let's do that. Oakland. Oh, man, that is so freaking funny. Oakland. How did they lose to Oakland? Hmm. Let's go to Cole. He wants to talk about Parishian and Greg Penn and their media availability. New defense will allow him to play fast. How some made, uh, made them make cautious is my takeaway. LSU defense is back. Madhouse. The mm. <laughs> loss to Oakland came up too short. <laughs> oh, man, this tournament takes no prisoners. It's nothing against orthodontists. We need you. But Kentucky's got two lottery guys. They have two guys in the top five. Cal is a March choker. His teams always play tentative. They always do. Okay, it was St. Peter's a few years ago, and it was Oakland this year. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Hmm. Don't pick the brand names this year. They're not that good. Kentucky went into this game with the worst defense in the tournament. The tournament. 
But they're Kentucky. We're going to make them go to the Final Four. Mm. Bad day for the SEC. And here's what I will say. I am SEC through and through. Have an SEC channel. I've been relatively successful with the SEC channel. No, it's not as big as some of the other SEC channels, but I'm also I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. Do you know what that means on the SEC channel? I'm independent on everything. I'm looking for someone to hire me. Who wouldn't want to hire me in the national media? Who who wouldn't want to hire one of the most entertaining college YouTubers, now pro YouTubers, on the planet? But this is what I would say. We deserve it as the SEC. We do. We're one of the major culprits that has changed college football forever. And we decided to release a nefariously bad football schedule with no fanfare because they knew it was wrong. They knew it was wrong. They knew it was lazy. Yeah, we're just going to release this on a random Wednesday before the NCAA tournament so people could totally forget about this. I just tell everyone, hey, you know this conference of 16 teams? Uh, We are going to hardly play anyone. We're not. We're just going to play the same teams over and over. That's the plan. That was a grand plan. They thought that was a great idea. We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to take away LSU-Auburn forever. We're going to take it away forever. So stupid. So stupid. But that's what we get. It's called karma. South Carolina got blown out today. Tough day. Mississippi State got blown out today by probably the best March Madness coach ever and Tom Izzo. I, I would consider him number one. I mean, he, he hadn't, he's won one national championship, but Tom Izzo has more wins as a March Madness coach as a lower seeded team than any coach in the history of the sport. 17 times. He has two more wins than anyone as a lower seeded team. Okay. And it, the other names are like Rolly Massimino, like a lot of legend coaches. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, we, we got cooked. I say we. We're not in the tournament. SEC got cooked today, but guess what? Texas a and still has to play. Tennessee still has to play. Auburn still has to play. I have Auburn and Tennessee in my Final Four. I got Tennessee winning it all in one bracket. My PHL bracket, I think I just went chalk, and I think I went UConn over, over Houston. Um. Next thing I I want to dive into, you know, our our practice videos do really well. I always appreciate uh, the support on on those. Uh, I want to dive a little bit deeper into stuff that Mason Taylor said about the uh, 12 personnel. Obviously, we did a video with Mason as the thumbnail. And this spring is going to be so unfreaking believably important for Kamari on Pimpin. Okay, this this spring, he is a player that really needs to take it to the next level for this reason. We know Mason Taylor's going to play, and he's 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 going to get, you know, have a typical Mason Taylor season: forty to fifty catches, clutch touchdowns. He was the highest rated blocker in the SEC per Pro Football Focus. Um, I, I'm I'm really excited to see what he's going to do next season. And we also know Mac Markway is going to have some type of role uh, for for LSU football this uh, next year because, well, he's he's more of a blocking tight end, and LSU will have a lot of you know goal line sets when they go goal line. They want to run twelve and thirteen personnel, but have blocking tight ends out there. So Kamari on Pinton has trade as Green coming in. Very similar player, similar profile, similar skill sets. And Trey Des Green, uh, by all accounts, can really play. So we've seen Pimpton in practice. He looks impressive. You know, when, when you watch him against Dare, he looks like an NFL tight end. But, you know, will the blocking come along? Will he become a more complete player? 
And I said this earlier this week on AYS. I've said it um, on here plenty of times. We tend to focus a little too much on true freshmen that can help right away. That's always the most exciting crop of players because they're new. They're they're new, and you've been following them on the recruiting boards, and they're still fresh because they're true freshmen. But really the players that propel your teams to the next level are the guys that are taking the huge jump from freshman to sophomore year. Uh, normally that's when you see a huge jump in superstardom. We had an outlier year where we had four true freshmen play unfreaking believably well in Brian Kelly's first year. Um, in Mason Taylor, Harold Perkins, Emory Jones, and Will Campbell. But that is few and far between. Normally it's a year two jump. That is what you're looking for. We have seen a lot of those at LSU. And you're going to need a Kamarion Pipton. You're going to need a Deshaun Womack. You're going to need a Jackson Howard. These are guys that are blue chip ratio guys. These are guys that were top 150 recruits. These are guys that everybody wanted. And all three of the guys I just mentioned are out of state guys. So you really had to put the foot on the gas pedal to go recruit them, fend off the other schools, and get them to BR. You have got to see that year two jump with Weeks uh, is, is another out-of-state guy. But unlike those others, he had a, a very uh, competitive and productive true freshman season. But you still got to get that leap. And your year two guys are oftentimes the surprise guys. Normally, your guys that are the year three guys, that should be your best players on the team. More often than not. But the year two guys taking that massive leap forward. You need it. You need it. Caleb Jackson, obviously, his role uh, will increase. Uh, but, but, of course, Josh Williams is still around. So, we'll see how all of that turns out. Let's go to Brian. Let's – that ceiling, that linebacker commit from Galena Park North Shore reminds me of Quan Alexander. Yes, uh, the young man who just committed, not this weekend, but the weekend um, before. Let me uh, get his name. John Blank. Charles Ross. I've not really watched him yet. Um, I really haven't. I actually watched some Tyler Miller release a film study, but I, I should go watch him. I watch like a, like really sit down and watch him. I watch like a few like clips, but not really sit down. Normally when a kid commits and I haven't watched him, I go like really watch like probably like a minute or two of the highlight tape. But yeah, I hope he is the next Quan Alexander. But you have a question here about Aaron Anderson. This is also another player that has uh, a huge year ahead of him. He's going into year three. And, you know, he's going up against someone who literally is a direct competitor to him all the way down to the punt return role, which seems to have slipped by Aaron Anderson. Uh him and Xavion Thomas, same recruiting class, near exact height, weight, build. Xavion's just a more explosive player, and that's solely because of the injury histories of these two players. Um, you know, Xavion's had some, uh, you know, dinged up moments, but Aaron Anderson, the injuries have just really hurt him, and We've not seen uh, the player that we saw out of car uh, just yet. Uh, you know, coming out of high school, I, I like Xavion better uh, than Aaron Anderson. I like Xavion better than any of the other skilled guys. Uh, but Aaron Anderson's got to watch out. It's 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 going to be tight. But the guy that's been playing ahead of both of them has been Kyle Parker, which is very 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 interesting. One thing I will say about Aaron Anderson 
uh, that needs work. And I, I saw this uh, briefly um, in, uh, in, in practice. Well, actually, I'll, 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 I'll save this. Uh, I'll save this for a different time. But f- for me, uh, one, one big thing for, for Aaron is just being healthy and becoming a more complete wide receiver. Um, Because, you know, the first Florida State game just did not work out the way that everyone thought it was going to work out. And look, one thing that worked against AA is, well, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas Jr. Ha, ha, ha. And Kyron Lacey. Sometimes there's just dudes ahead of you. Uh, but I'll tell you this. One thing that I've been constantly fed is Chris Hilton. It's just nonstop Chris Hilton. He, he's an animal. And I hope so. I mean, he's also a guy that's had injury issues. Um But I posted this photo a little bit earlier today. I want to talk a little bit about Will Campbell. So I saw Will post this photo. I don't know if this is blood or not. Uh, This is very uh, gruesome. Jaden Daniels said, I miss you, bro. This is crazy. Will is quite literally built different. I, I'm guessing his lip got cut or something like that. Let's see. And then there's something uh, that's that's got to be his mouthpiece right there. That is so dope. Ah, ah, ah! It's on his gloves. That is crazy. It's still so cool to see an offensive lineman wear number seven. Right here. He's built different, y'all. He's he's not a regular human like you and I. We are mere mortals. Jordan, I saw you just like the tweet. Jordan's my guy. Look at that, dude. <laughs> Jared says he doesn't bleed purple. Oh, that's funny. I like it. Owen Owen Papo reference. Mingo, of course, was was an edge guy. Um he was an end, but I uh, Owen Papo definitely holds up there. BT hey, if Aaron Anderson breaks out, Brian is your guy. Brian is your guy. Must be someone else's blood. Yeah. Could be. That is just so wild, bro. I love it. Huh? 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 Now, let's see. How is uh, the portal receiver? I'll tell you this, uh, CJ um, Daniels. That's funny, Cole. I hope he's not buying the DTs. We need all of them. (laughs) So, yeah, CJ Daniels. um, I'll tell you this. LSU uh, released a clip on social media of uh, a really good play from one of our DBs which is obviously something we want to see. Ashton Stamps had a nice pass breakup. You know, with, with C.J. Daniels, you, you look at his tape from last year, and, you know, I shared my concerns uh, on, on Patreon and in our actual film study. C.J. is a very interesting guy. Um, is a advocate for epilepsy, I learned. 
uh, from one, uh, a nonprofit he works with actually reached out to me uh, and gave me a little bit more background, which is cool. That was just out of nowhere. It's awesome. Um, you know, last year at Liberty, he mostly did most of his damage on the right side, or at least that's what I've noticed. And yeah, I think he can give you some uh, something in the slot, but I, I I am not for certain that he is a forty to fifty catch guy, even though when it comes to advanced statistics, he was the number one wide receiver in all of college football in yards per route run. And that stat normally is pretty sticky. Okay. Yards per route run is basically the amount of routes you run. You divide the yards by the amount of routes you run. That's how you get that number. And it was better than Malik Neighbors, better than Marvin Harrison, better than anyone. And you got to think this wide receiver draft class was loaded. This was a really good uh college football season when it comes to wide receivers. Malik Neighbors is probably winning the Bolitnikoff in most seasons. Uh but not this one. So it's uh it's very interesting when you see CJ dominate in that fashion. So he had elite quarterback play at his last stop, didn't play the late, same level of competition. Now he's got elite quarterback play here. And, you know, he's just getting his feet wet going up against SEC DBs. But I I do think he's going to be good. I really, really, really do think so. So there you go. Amicat coming off the uh, – Amicat, I, sh- I appreciate your love on the NFL channel this uh, earlier today. You want to see Harold Perkins get more carries? It could be. You could see it. I mean – The issue with that, though, is him learning uh, the um, the new defense and a new role as you know your traditional off ball middle linebacker. Now, next thing, I do briefly. I don't want to dive too deep into this because you guys most of you watching I would I would guess know more about the ins and outs of LSU baseball than I do but this series versus Florida becomes a lot bigger considering we kind of laid an egg last week versus Mississippi State we got mercy ruled uh, won a 98 shootout and then lost four to 10, you know, in, in game one, you got the number eight Florida Gators coming to town. There is not one team. Florida is more motivated to play than us. That's all there is to it. We ripped their hearts out in a very emotional college world series. And, I understand the players are, are very different. You know, we, you had transcendency with uh, both teams, Wyatt Lankford for Florida. You also had Dylan Cruz and Paul Skeens for LSU. And then, of course, Trey Morgan and Cade Beloso. Uh, you know, all those guys are gone. But Florida wants revenge. And, of course, you don't want to, have all this hype and have a great start to the season and then start the year basically 0-2 in series in SEC play. Now, it's not the be-all, end-all if LSU struggles uh, versus Florida and and they lose 2-3, of but you would would like to win this series. It becomes more important to win this series after you lost the last one. So, very excited to see what Jay Johnson's got cooking. It's going to be an absolutely wild, and I mean wild, 
24 hours here. All right, football is probably the last thing on a lot of our minds. For me, it's always the number one thing. Huh? 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 Uh, more often than not. But I do get up uh, for women's basketball quite a bit. Okay? And look, is it weird playing these NCAA tournament games in Baton Rouge? Yes, because they change like they change a few things about how the stadium is set up. And I was informed. I, I actually didn't know about this. My my mother called me and and said, Hey, you 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 heard about some LSU fans complaining about the tickets. I was like, what? She was like, yeah, the ticket allocation was uh, different for this game, which is not really not out of the ordinary when the NCAA, you know, takes over something like this. But still, you had this Rice game, Rice coming in 3 p.m. Central. You should be able to take care of business. I don't have a Rice guy report ready for you. I'm not Bob Starkey. Ha, ha, ha. Um, but obviously, everyone is looking forward to this second round game on Sunday versus Louisville, and we will have a post game show if it's Louisville or, or Middle Tennessee. I don't know if we'll go live directly after the game. We'll probably just go on our normal live stream time. Uh, but yeah, you know, I I, I think Angel Reese is just going to get us through. Superstars show up when the lights are the brightest. We do need some solid point guard play from Haley Van Lith. Obviously, it's going to be a motivated HVL. But let's see what happens. But yes, absolutely wild 24 hours in Baton Rouge. NCAA basketball tournament game. And then home baseball series all on the same weekend. So my question for my super diehard LSU fans, I think Hal is going to try and pull this off. Are you going to both games or are you going to just one game or the other game? Are you going to try to pull the double header off? That's what I want to know. Okay. Now, don't forget one way you can support us is by going to powerhourlsu.com slash shop. Uh, you know, when because I work from home, I go walk around my neighborhood uh, quite a bit uh, just to get my legs moving. I actually went on a run today. And when I was walking, I saw, you know, one of my little neighborhood kids. He, he got him a PHL shirt. He was rocking it. You can do the same thing. Powerhourlsu.com slash shop. Once again. PowerHourLSU.com slash shop. Okay. Please, 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 please. I want to keep it up. So, how you couldn't even get a ticket? Is it that hard to get a ticket for the games this weekend? For the women's game, it's sold out. There has to be a stub hub way. There has to be a way for how to get in. And it is a home game, but it is different. It is very different. Now, here's what you're going to do. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to answer as many questions as we possibly can. But if you're super chat, we'll keep it going. I've touched on everything uh, that I basically wanted to get to tonight. Obviously, I would venture off to say that Brian Kelly is not thrilled with the 2025 schedule for two reasons. The first...
Brian Kelly and Scott Woodward won nine games. The second, or they won a nine game conference schedule, is it's just lazy. It's Brian Kelly is a process guy. The process behind playing the same teams and a 16 team conference. Do you know how nonsensical it is to play the same exact teams? And the main reason we expanded the SEC is for football. And and there's plenty of matchups that we've never seen. Georgia has never, ever been to College Station, ever, since the new conferences were made when Texas A&M and Missouri joined. The SEC does not know how to make an equitable schedule or even a, a, a decent schedule. The main reason we love SEC football so much is because we love our teams. We love the sport of football. Um, the sport was regional at one point. At least in the SEC, it still kind of is. And because it had scarcity. But if you ever rationally broke down an SEC schedule, it made no sense. But yeah, now, something else I wanted to get into at the end was Will Wade did get absolutely demolished uh, today. It's because I bet McNeese uh, the cover plus seven. Huh? 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 Uh, I actually really, really liked Gonzaga, but I wasn't going to bet against Will Wade. I wasn't going to bet him. You have Mark Fuse, one of the best tournament coaches of all time, even though he's never won a natty. And Will Wade... Um, Will Wade's a very, very good coach. I wouldn't necessarily consider him tactically elite. Mark Few is tactically elite. Uh, but he is Will, Will Wade, of course, is still you know one of the best LSU basketball coaches ever at the school. Uh, if we're just talking solely basketball and not you know what offers. Huh? 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 Let me see. That's not what I wanted. Oh, it's because I did this. I mean. This was sent to me a minute ago. Oh, man. That is so good. Big month for UK disappearing acts. From Jessica Benson. Get it, Kate Middleton. John Calipari. Ha, 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 ha. That's world class. That is world, world, world class. I don't know what it is about Cal. I've just never, I've never, the coach that I always loved was Izzo. I grew up loving Michigan State basketball. That's kind of faded, you know, over time, but I love the color green growing up. And that Mo Pete, Mateen Cleaves tournament just happened during my childhood. I remember Mateen Cleaves rolling his ankle and playing with a bum ankle and still winning that game.
That is good. That is rich. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. I, I don't even know anything about the royal family. Um, but that's not here nor there. It is funny. UK. I love a good play on words. I really do. So Tennessee's holding down. Uh, it looks like they're going to take care of business versus uh, St. Peter's. And the SEC won't go winless today. But then again, there are two versus a 15 seed. I have Tennessee win at all. I think they're really, really, really good. And there you go. Here's something I saw. Um, and this was um, another SEC message board. All right. So with the transfer portal, these kids are just entering the portal like crazy. And, you know, on my SEC channel, a lot of my Arkansas stuff gets shared. Once again, the two fan bases that support me on the SEC channel, the Arkansas fans and the Tennessee fans, those two really push my stuff. And honestly, Tennessee has moved into the number one spot. You know, I, I'm a big Peyton Manning fan. I love that Peerless Price team. Uh, but it's I, I really don't have a whole lot of, like, just love or hatred towards Tennessee. But I, w- I, I was in one of these message board groups, and Arkansas, and it wasn't even, a, it was like a Facebook group. Arkansas had a bunch of players into the portal today. And over the past couple of days, a few Arkansas natives entered uh, the transfer portal. And this this always drives me up, up a wall. When fans blame other fans for pushing a player into the portal, it, it was the fans who didn't show player support. That's the reason why player X into the portal. And this, this one Arkansas fan was blaming all the other Arkansas fans. If the fans of the team are the reason why you're leaving the school, you're probably not cut out to play SEC athletics. Okay. The first thing is 90% of fans, I would say 90 to 95% of fans are supportive. Supportive. I would like to think that most people that comment on my channel, comment under videos that I do, send me emails and all that stuff. Yeah, at times we'll, we'll, say player X is struggling or, or or whatever, but we're supportive. We want the team to win. It is such a small fraction of fans that say the toxic stuff. And I'm not saying that's fine. Okay. It's I'm, I'm not saying that's fine at all, but I'm being honest at the same time, more often than not, it's justified. Okay. Uh, the, the, the criticism, it's not justified to go the links at some uh, that, that some people go to, um, but normally there there's a reason why fans are, are aren't happy. And the second thing is every single fan base has toxic fans. There is not a single fan base that exists on this planet that does not have toxic fans. They, they, they're, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. So I hate it when fans blame other fans as a reason why a team fails or the reason why a player fails. Yes, you should support. Yes, you shouldn't tweet at players. Yes, you, you shouldn't go overboard in what you say about a player. But that is almost never the reason why players are leaving. The portal is there because it's limitless opportunities. You might be testing your market. You still have all the power to come back to the school you are presently at if they choose to bring you back. So, you know, a player into the portal isn't always a be-all, end-all. Who you should feel bad for are these group of five schools that lose their elite players because they're jumping up to a higher level at a, at a power five school.
Tennessee's not beating Houston. They are in the same bracket, right? Well, you are an H down. I heard one of Houston's guards are banged up, though. Yeah, so we're having the Will Wade debate in, in the chat. I'll say this. Jared is a pretty diehard LSU uh, basketball fan, men's and women's. Uh, so I, I get being sad that Will Wade's gone. We're not in the NCAA tournament for the second year. We really weren't close. And I get it. It's it's it's, it's very frustrating. But, you know... I understood why 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 LSU decided to go in a different direction. Um, I don't think today is a reason why Will is bad or good or whatever. I thought the T-shirts today were a little much. I, I really did. Uh, but that's not here nor there. Hmm. Oh, how thinks Houston's going down to Texas A&M? I think Texas A&M's a... I think Houston's a terrible matchup for Texas A&M. I really do think so. They're, Texas A&M's got really good guards. Houston suffocates your guards. I think to beat Houston, you've you've... You've got I, I don't know how Wade Taylor is going to do anything versus Houston. That is a tough matchup. That's if AM wins. Mark is 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 way back uh, in the live stream. So for those that missed it, we showed a photo of a bloody Will Campbell. It's on my Twitter account. Uh at Power Hour LSU. I'll post it up there. I'll post it up here again. Let's see. Bang. Look at that. Crazy. That's ear. That is actual ear. I'm kidding. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Okay, Hal. All right, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Pulling for Samford. Let's go, Samford. Where 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 am I? Where are my mobilians cheering for for Samford? Isn't that where Samford is located? No, it's in Homewood, Alabama. Where's Homewood, Alabama? Jared, help me out of here. Homewood, Alabama. I have a cousin who went there. Let's go. Oh, it's in Bur- near Birmingham. Okay. What's up, Michael? There you are. Not close to Mobile. 
I gotta go check out the campus. So you got Vermin here. Is that true? Jimbo is a QB at Sanford? There you go. All right, y'all. I will say this. I am in the middle. The McNeese got blown out, George. I'm in the middle of going live after the game tomorrow. Uh, it just depends on how the game goes. If it's a blowout, I probably won't go live. But I, I might. I'm, I'm in the middle of going live directly after uh, the women's game and ending it a little bit before baseball. Just be on the lookout uh, for that. And uh, I got a few things I got to do tomorrow as well. Um, big thanks to all our patrons. We really appreciate that. Please go join the PHL Patreon. We've got so many fun uh, film studies and extra things that we have going on. Um, Mobilians. Is it crypto? No. I, I wish I had some crypto. Oh, we hired John Brady from Stanford. Oh, I didn't know that. Did not know that. Uh, no super chats tonight, but uh, Jared remains our super chat champion from yesterday's live stream. So I appreciate that. And we'll talk to you soon. Kentucky Laws. How about that? It has power. Power. LSU, boom. And tonight we are doing oh, uh, some chicken and and beef stir fry. There you go, Jared. Jared still. Jared says I want to hold on to that title. I appreciate you. Uh, so you did super. We'll keep it going for a little bit longer. I'm. I'm. Uh, there is something I have to. Uh, there is something I have to do early in the morning, but I don't mind hanging out for a little while longer. Appreciate you, J-Red. As always, holding it down. Keeping the rent paid. So, yeah, I just don't know if, if Kentucky even thinks about moving on from Coach Cal. I mean, the guy's a Hall of Famer. He puts out lottery picks every year in the NBA draft, every single year. And the thing about it is all these Kentucky guards normally hit, all right? Like Devin Booker hit, Tyrese Maxey hit, John Wall hit. I mean, these guys go to the league, and they they – they live up and or exceed expectations, right? Like the Harrison twins really didn't do anything in the NBA. Uh, Tyler Eulis really didn't, but I mean, at least they, they played some. Where did... um. Let me, let me make sure I get this correct. Yeah, Shea Gilders Alexander went to Kentucky. And he, he might win the freaking MVP this year. So what do you do? I mean, you, I, I just don't know if you can just fire the guy. I really don't know. Um, He's a Hall of Famer. He still recruits. At an extremely high level, who have two more lottery picks this next year. Can you really say you can do better than Cal? I mean, maybe every single coach outside of maybe 10 are dropping what they're doing and taking that job in a heartbeat. So you could pick basically whoever you want. And a lot of guys that are at the elite jobs aren't really all that elite, right? You've had a few guys, you know, retire recently. So 
you know, Roy Williams retired. Uh, Jay Wright retired. Coach K retired. So that means there's more elite coaches that are out there for you to choose from. In theory. Mario. I'm out. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate you. Let's go.